Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on March 19th, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well, earthquakes and world weather. Starting out here, always looking at our sun as we've had some pretty active events happen over the last 48 hours. 304 angstroms showing a large plasma filament in the northern hemisphere and as well one in the last few images there ripping away from the southeast region. Look in the last 48 hours incoming with a little earth to scale size comparison. Pretty active sunspot region coming in the southern hemisphere cresting now. Looking at outgoing this is where we had that plasma filament eruption on the right hand side watch that in the last few images you're going to see that propel away from the southern hemisphere very fast moving plasma filament also a couple notable just about m class solar flares coming from the left hand side there 193 angstroms this is where we can see the coronal hole regions which is cooled regions on our star which can increase solar wind speeds when they are directed at Earth. 171 angstroms. This is where we can see our heliosphere in action. Very interesting with that solar tornado that was spinning around the North Pole of the Sun, creating quite a shock wave across the top of our star. Looking at multi-spectrum, this is where we can see that solar tornado eventually just whip away. And as well, those are the, our sunspot regions that are Earth-facing. Notable, pretty active sunspot regions cresting in. And as well, that solar tornado. Just amazing images. Solar Dynamics Observatory mixed here with daily events worldwide. One more little zoom on that solar tornado, amazing stuff and active, active sunspot. Space weather conditions are low right now, sitting at about 430 kilometers per second solar winds. And we had two C-class solar flares since last night's update. Solar proton flux, but is slowly rising there just in the last few hours at the same time as our Schumann residents seeing quite a spike Geomagnetic, geomagnetic activity sitting at a KP of 2. Real-time solar wind sitting at about 440 kilometers per second after being up to about 470 to 480 earlier in the morning today, right about the same time as the Schumann resonance spike. Having a look at the ISWA space prediction spiral showing all of the sun's events being propelled into the solar system. Another look at NOAA here showing the space weather event coming our way. We did have a double shot CME taking off from the southeast region. That is most recent aurora forecast for tonight. Could see a nice little northern light show through Canada and as well parts of eastern Europe, Russia. Having a look at Lasco 2, and this is where we're looking at Mercury and as well the last 48 hours of events on our star. Yesterday, I pointed out that large plasma filament eruption, a very dense one. But then another one here, very fast moving, has ejected from the southern hemisphere of our sun. And might actually give us a glancing blow in the future here. Stay tuned, stay aware and prepared with daily events. We'll keep you updated on this event as it has not been forecasted into the ISWA space prediction spiral yet. Still waiting confirmation on where exactly this is going, but that was a fast moving injection of plasma. As we've seen a lot of that recently, our sun tearing itself apart through solar cycle 25, a maximum and we'll be coming for an 11-year minimum. Amazing stuff. Amazing imagery. 
Schumann resonance for today, strong power of 52. You can see the spike in the telemetry there all across the board. If you're a numbers guy or gal, amplitude of 52, 8.1 quality, and a frequency max of 7.8, ultimate power of 46. Let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours. We're sitting at about 230 across the world, according to USGS, and that's just slightly above average. But we're going to start out here in Alaska, 5.4 in Anchor Point, Alaska, 65 kilometer depth. Minor activity is increasing through the region and has been this last little while through the Aleutian Islands over to the Tanaga Volcano and the Attu Station. Also notable earthquakes there, Kuril, Russia. And as well, Izu Islands, Japan, 4.8. 4.9 earthquake here in Bengkulu, Indonesia, 58 kilometer depth, just north of active Merapi and Krakatoa. And then we get to Fiji here where we had pretty deep earthquake, 545 kilometer depth, followed by that 4.8 from yesterday. So pretty deep, two of them, two pretty deep earthquakes. Fiji as well, 3.6 there. Continuing in northern New Zealand. Notable earthquake here, 6.8 earthquake, Ecuador. Reports of a lot of people feeling that in the comments section. I appreciate you all checking in. Thoughts and prayers going out to everybody affected. Not much has changed through the United States except for this. 3.8 in Colorado. 3.8 magnitude being reported there. And as well, Bombay, California, Salton Sea. Notable earthquake here, Carmel, Canada. Notre Dame, Dumont. And then we get to the North Pole, where they reported in the Norwegian Sea a 4.1, as well a 4.8 there in Turkey, or sorry, 4.3, 4.5, 4.1 there in Tajikistan. Here's a glance at the last seven days for earthquakes across the world. Still watching a pretty active ring of fire as per usual. Nothing out of the ordinary yet. But that seems to be a calm right now over the last couple days. And we're about to hit the spring equinox. By the way, happy spring 2023. Get ready for some big changes. They're coming. Let's have a look at world weather. We're going to start out here looking at windy models. Very large, low-pressure system building in the Atlantic, North Atlantic, which is going to be affecting, looks like, Atlantic provinces here, Newfoundland, and as well, Greenland, Iceland, and then eventually the United Kingdom, as this system ramps and roars up through the North Atlantic, heading right towards the United Kingdom. And then a couple of these systems smashing into each other, one being thrown southward into the Mediterranean, and then even stronger system here developing in the North Atlantic long range forecast. Long range forecast does not look good for the Atlantic right now. Still looking at a pretty strong polar outflow as we will see a lot of snow falling through parts of Northern Ontario, Quebec. West Coast has got another low pressure system heading in there for Tuesday. And then that will shuffle across Canada. And then watch for snow as temperatures are still below seasonal and a pretty strong plume of moisture tucked up with that large low in the North Atlantic. So heads up the United Kingdom. Overlooking the rest of the world, pretty interesting sign signatures here through Central Indian Ocean. Seems to be a pretty strong a low pressure system locked up there, trying to grind its way eastward. No major typhoons or cyclones to talk about. And it rains staying mostly north through parts of Australia and then south towards the end of the week. Let's have a look at temperatures worldwide as we're still seeing a lot of cold temperatures, higher elevations across the world that seem to be hanging out nightly. Looking at a polar outflow there through Newfoundland, Atlantic provinces. Cold temperatures, higher elevation, 
across the West Coast into the Pacific Northwest. And things are st really starting to warm up through Europe. Watch for the big winds of change here with spring tomorrow. And thanks everybody for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoy the information shared. Staying aware, prepared to world events, earthquakes, volcanoes, world weather, and of course, space weather. Following along here on Solar Cycle 25. Much love, much love everybody. Stay aware, prepared, stay young and have fun. Today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.